Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Investing Kev. We have made it to the one year mark of the strategies portfolio. Hooray. Time flies when you're having fun losing a lot of money in the stock market. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the strategies portfolio, which portfolios did well or bad, things that stood out, notable news that impacted the stocks, and other miscellaneous things. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think. All right, everyone, let's get started. I have a slideshow I want to go through with the main points, but before that, I want to show you the overall profit or loss of each portfolio over a one-year time span. The link to the spreadsheet is in the description box below. As a quick overview, I invested in four different common investing strategies. I wanted to pick a few stocks that were popular among the investing communities that invest in these different strategies. The goal for doing this was just to see how each portfolio did after one year. In the S&P 500 ETF portfolio, we were down 6.82%. I had the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, ticker VOO. Looking at the dividends portfolio, we were up overall 5.72%, powered by Abvi, Pepsi, and the Southern Company. Looking at the growth portfolio, everything was completely red. The portfolio was down 32.34% overall, which is painful to see. And the final portfolio is a balanced portfolio, which is a mix of dividend stocks and growth stocks. That was down 18.67% overall, with the only stock in the green was AT&T. I want to share some lessons from doing this. Dividends might be boring to a lot of investors, but they are a great form of investing. There's also a common myth that dividends don't really have capital gains, but that can definitely happen. For example, AVI, ticker ABBV, I was up 16% over the year. Looking at Southern Company, ticker SO, I saw 14% in capital gains. The next point is that ETFs are great investments for any level of investing. The ETF portfolio was down 6.82% compared to the growth and balance portfolios, which were down 32 and 18%. Depending on the ETF you invest in, you can definitely experience less volatility and that alone can provide a lot of peace of mind for investors. Don't let people tell you that ETFs are boring or that they suck or only beginner investors do that stuff. Plenty of people had made their wealth off of ETFs, so definitely don't listen to the haters. And another lesson that I learned was that the market was and is extremely overvalued and growth stocks got hammered due to numerous factors. These are my top 5 biggest losers. When I look at Teladoc, I am down 61.4%. Looking at DraftKings, I am down 48.6%. Looking at NEO, I am down 38.2%. Alibaba, 31.5%. And Disney, 28.8%. The stock market the past two years has definitely been a roller coaster ride. Within the past year, I've gone through the highs and the lows, and that's just a part of investing. In this slide, I want to focus on dividends. If you look at my dividend graph, over the past year, you can see the overall trend for the dividends climbing higher and higher. Things definitely start off slow, but you can see how things gradually start picking up as the months go by. Fractional shares are powerful, and reinvesting your dividends instead of spending it on bills can definitely help the acceleration. Right now, at its current state, I would be receiving $109.22 in total dividends in a one-year time frame. I will soon be reaching $120 per year, which is about $10 per month. Again, it doesn't seem like much, but the more money you put in and the more fractional shares you accrue, it definitely helps. And you can't forget the dividend raises. Here are the notable dividend raises within the past year. Realty Income increased their dividends by 5.1% over the past year. Pepsi increased theirs by 7%. Prudential increased theirs by 4.3%. Southern Company increased theirs by 3%. Microsoft increased theirs by 10.7%. Simon Property Group increased theirs nearly 31%. As a note, Simon Property Group cut their dividend during the early days of the pandemic, which was around $8 per share. Apple increased theirs by 4.5%. And AT&T decreased theirs from $2.08 down to $1.11. This was due to the Warner Media spinoff. You can see the different rates that these companies hike their dividends. Some are playing catch up, some are trying to match inflation, and some increase their dividends at numbers less than inflation. At the end of the day, as a dividend investor, I'm grateful to get dividends so I can continue to build my portfolio. In this slide, I want to focus on news that stood out in the past year. Realty Income, ticker O, spun off their Orion Office REIT. They had a 10 to 1 conversion, so for every 10 shares of Realty Income, you will receive one share of Orion Office. AT&T spun off Warner Media with Discovery to form Warner Bros. Discovery. This is also why their dividend went down from $2.08 down to $1.11. You had Disney taking on Florida when it came to the Don't Say Gay bill. You had Chinese data regulation, which impacted Alibaba, JD, and NEO. You also have negotiations between Chinese regulators and American regulators. This is in regards to financial audits. If they can't get something agreed upon, these Chinese stocks may be delisted starting next year, 2023. You had Teladoc, which has slowing growth and revised guidance. Of course, you have the Russia-Ukraine war. And inflation is currently running hot, hot, hot. The overall investor sentiment, they are worried about the market. Mortgage rates are rising. Things are really expensive right now. And the ongoing talks of a possible recession continue to hit the media cycle. With that being said, you just never know what can happen and what will happen. No company is safe from internal issues and outside forces. The market is unpredictable. Timing the market is hard. 
My advice is just get your foot in the door. The market right now is so fragile. One day people will take their money out of growth stocks and invest in dividend stocks. The other day they'll take it from dividend stocks and invest in growth stocks. Today you can be up 8% and tomorrow you can be down 10%. It is really rocky right now in the markets. So here's my advice to all of you. Consider ETFs in your portfolio. You might want to reevaluate your investing goals and invest in something less volatile. ETFs can definitely provide that opportunity so you don't have to keep chasing for more and lose more money. The next point is that dollar cost averaging is a great investment style. For example, investing in Teladoc over a year versus lump sum. So my total cost basis for Teladoc is $510. If I invested that $510 on June 1st, 2021, I would be down 78.64%. But because I dollar cost average over a year, I'm down 61%. Being down 61% is not pleasant, but it definitely beats being down 78.6%. The next point is to let go of the emotions, cut your losses, and move on to better opportunities. My rule for this portfolio was that I had to stick with the holdings for at least a year. If I did not have this rule, I would have sold Teladoc and invested in better opportunities. I would have sold AT&T after the spinoff of Warner Media after receiving the final dividend. Just because you cut your losses on a stock does not mean that it's a bad stock. Sometimes that stock that you believe in does not provide the best opportunity at this moment. You can always come back to it over time. Keep your options open, be flexible, and be willing to change. And the next point is talking about patience and consistency. Investing is a long-term journey. If you believe in a company and their future growth prospects, take some time to evaluate and determine your investment amount and schedule. The next point I want to talk about is diversification. In my opinion, diversification is necessary, but it is subjective and you have to find the right balance. Is it 5 stocks? Is it 10 stocks? Is it 25 stocks? You also have to ask yourself, are you willing to keep track of these stocks? Are you willing to keep up with the news? Are you willing to keep up their dividend raises and cuts or any other management changes? A stock that you find exciting right now might be really boring six months from now. I want to say that boring is good a lot of times when it comes to investing. Investing in boring old companies that continue to raise their revenues year over year is a great thing. Investing in companies that continue to raise their dividends year over year, even though it's boring, is a great thing. You just have to evaluate whether it's a good boring or a bad boring and go from there. You have to ask yourself, what is your time horizon? Is it one year, three year, five years, ten years? Because if it's a one year time frame, Chinese stocks would have been a bad investment within the past year. Teladoc would have been a bad investment. Avia would have been a great investment. The S&P 500 definitely had its ups and downs within the past year. It still would have been a solid investment in my opinion. The next point is that do you have conviction in what you're invested in? Do you have an exit plan? This might result in you placing limit orders on certain stocks. For example, if a stock reaches $25, I will sell half my position. This leads to the next point that don't be afraid to take profits. You can definitely have short versus long-term tax rates and you'll have to figure that out. Do not be afraid to take profits and secure that cash. And it's okay to change your mind on an investment. Like I said before, a stock that you find exciting right now, you might find boring a year from now. Learn your lesson and move on. And don't compare yourself to others. Be willing to self-reflect, learn lessons, and continue to push forward. I also want to share some purchase histories that stood out and showed dollar cost averaging. Looking at the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, ticker VOO, in Q2 I invested $603.12 and I received 1.45 shares at an average price of $415. In Q3 I invested $605 and I got 1.45 shares at an average of $417. And in Q4 I put in $607 for 1.55 shares at an average price of $391. This is dollar cost averaging through the highs and the lows. Looking at NEO, in Q2 my average purchase price was $38.80, in Q3 it was $27.24, and in Q4 it was $17.56. In Q4 I was able to purchase double the amount I was able to in Q2. I have strong conviction in NEO's future. Look at Teladoc, in Q2 it was $131 on average per share, and in Q4 it's all the way down to $49. And looking at AbV, AbV kept hitting all time record highs. In Q2, the average purchase price was $111. In Q3, all the way to $137. And now in Q4, it was $153. Dividends can definitely get capital gains. You can also see the dividend amount. In Q2, I got $2.41 in dividends. In Q3, it was $4.07. And in Q4, I got $5.23 from Abby. So what's next? I'm going to say goodbye to this portfolio. I'm going to be selling out of most positions and using that for my personal portfolio. I'm going to keep Neil, Alibaba, DraftKings, and a few others. I'm taking profits from the dividend stocks. This journey was fun to do, but I definitely need cash freed up for my personal portfolio. Down the road, I might consider doing a Chinese stock portfolio. This might be the possible next portfolio challenge. I'm considering doing an all Chinese focused stock portfolio to see how things do in a one year time span. The possible start date might be January 1st, 2023. 
I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for following me on this journey. I wanted to show what you can do investing in portfolios if you only had $100 every few weeks to spend. And to break that down even further, what would happen if you invested on average $20 into each stock each time? No matter how much you have, whether it's $5, $10, $15, $20, that stuff goes a long ways over time. Stay consistent, do your research, and keep pushing. Thank you everyone for tuning into this episode of the One Year Strategies Portfolio Anniversary. If you like this content, please like this video, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think. If you want to check out this spreadsheet, the link will be in the description box below. As always, thank you for tuning in, stay safe, and I'll see you all next time.